Hi everyone, so this is part two of the first day in syllabus uh, video. Uh, we just finished talking about the importance of the one grade. Uh, the idea again is that do not be afraid of the one grade. If you get a one grade, it doesn't mean that you're failing. Uh, it doesn't mean that you should drop the course. It doesn't mean that you don't know how to write. Uh, instead, the one grade is where I'm going to actually provide some instruction. Everybody's probably going to get a one at some point, and I'm going to say, hey, here's some things that you need to learn, right? And I'll talk to you on the phone, teach you those things, and then you can, you'll get full credit and move on. Really important. Uh, because students misunderstand what that one grade means. Um, Blackboard. So um, uh, Blackboard, of course, is vital to this course. Uh, as an online course, everything is done through Blackboard. Um, there, I have one video that I have at the beginning in case you don't understand how to use Blackboard, but that's it. Everything else happens inside of Blackboard. So if you're having any issues with Blackboard, make sure to contact the, contact the help desk. They can help you. This is their phone number that we have here. Sorry, I'm having problems highlighting. Um, this is their phone number, uh, and this is their email address. Any issues you're having with them, contact them. Send me an email. Let me know you're having some problems, and I can try and figure out what to do uh, in the meantime. But uh, again, make sure that you're keeping up with Blackboard. And then here in bold, again, so you know that it's important, um, Blackboard will send you notifications about when assignments are due. Ignore those notifications. If something's popping up on Blackboard or any or an email, something you log into Blackboard and it says an assignment's due, don't pay attention to that. You've got a schedule of assignments, and that tells you when the assignments are due. And the links where you go, where you submit your assignments, that will tell you when your assignments are due. For complicated and boring reasons, um, uh, Blackboard is going to tell you that the, your assignments are due before they're actually due. Ignore those. Pay attention to what is on the schedule, right? The schedule is what matters. There is a schedule of assignments. Pay attention to that. As long as you're hitting those marks, you'll be fine. And if you have any questions about that, make sure to email me. Uh, keeping in touch, I've mentioned this already, but it is really important, right? Especially, like I said, in this summer class, you have got to keep in touch with me, right? Uh, because, again, things can change pretty quickly. Uh, uh, you can turn into a situation where you may not be able to get out of the class if you're not keeping in touch with me, especially, as I say, if you have a one, right? If you receive a one or I suggest that we talk, please contact me as soon as possible. Not contacting me in such a situation could have a negative effect on your grade, right? So again, keep, uh, um, uh, uh, keep that in mind. I've got the office hours, as I mentioned before, where you can call me on the phone and I'll answer. If you're not available during my office hours, email me and we can set up an appointment. Please, 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 this is the most, one of the most important things. Contact me, right? Stay in touch. I will say that sometimes a million times, and then I'll, I'll ask students, I'm like, why don't you touch me? And look, talk to me. And I'm like, well, I didn't want to bother you. No, <laughs> bother me. That's my job. Please, please, please uh, contact me. It is not a bother. That's what I'm supposed to be doing is, is uh, uh, talking to you. So I can't stress that enough. Uh, talk to me. If I don't answer when you call and we have a meeting or something, it's my office hours, call back. Right. Um, also, I will maintain uh, uh, keep call back and keep calling until I do answer. Sometimes I can't get to my phone. Uh, also, I will maintain an Ask Me Anything discussion board where you can ask any class related discussion uh, dis questions. You don't have to uh, utilize the Ask Me Anything discussion board, but it's there. It's just another way that I have for students to contact me if they want. Um, plagiarism, turn it in, and Chat GPT. So. Uh, Turnitin, all of your uh, major assignments are going to be uh, submitted through Turnitin, and it is a program that has within it uh, something that checks for plagiarism. What it does, it goes out to say, wait a minute, have I seen this assignment before? So if a student says, wait, I had Martinez's class before, uh, I'll just grab some of the writings that my friend did and submit those. Well, those are all now all in the database. So they're going to uh, come up. And if you caught, get caught doing something like that, uh, you're going to get uh, a one that will not be changed. That's the time when the one won't be changed. If you're copying something from GradeSaver or some other website like that, that'll show up. And then that's where you potentially get a one. So don't get involved in anything like that. Um, uh, and you can potentially fail the entire course for that. Um, and then um, chat GPT and AI, that creates a whole other issue. Uh, I didn't even talk about it because I just put an ellipsis mark there because 
that is a difficult situation. I, I try to uh, uh, construct the assignments in such a way that I want you to talk about yourself uh, in order to be able to keep away from that. Um, and realize that I want you to, to be able to develop not only writing skills, but thinking skills. And if you're using something like chat GPT and AI, you aren't developing those thinking skills. Uh, and realize that I structure this course, that whole idea of the, the one grades and all that, or they give a full credit or one grade, that is designed to uh, disincentivize, to make it uh, less attractive to cheat because you can get full credit. All you have to do to get full credit is write something and then I'll look at it and, uh, and if it's uh, if there's something I need to explain to you, I'll give you a one and then we'll talk about that, right? And so um, there's no sense uh, in which there's you know uh, some big advantage for having perfect essays. That's not what I'm looking for, right? What I'm looking for is your work and I want to see you understanding your work and see how it's improving. I talked in the previous video how we move from outline to rough draft to final draft and so I want to see that improvement. You've got to look at my comments. You've got to make those changes. Um, and so it's this is not about saying, oh, I created something perfect, so give me an A, right? Uh, it, it's about what are you learning? And that's why I will stop you at each stage and talk to you. In fact, if I get things that are too good, I go, why is this so good? Let's talk about that. I'll give you one potentially. So um, uh, there's no advantage to that. Even if you are not the best writer, you can still get an A in this class, right? You just have to write the assignments. So I want you to keep that uh, in mind as we go through. There's no real advantage to you uh, um, uh, grade-wise in terms of uh, being able to use something like that. Uh, and in fact, you will not be learning some things that are incredibly important. So keep all that in mind and don't get involved in any of that because it can only cause you trouble. Uh, um, uh, last things I have in here, a campus writing center. We have a campus writing center. Uh, you can make appointments with them. However, especially in the summer, it's much more important. Just talk to me, right? I really don't want to have students go into the writing center. And I'm like, how come you haven't asked me these questions? Because I'm sitting here waiting. I'm waiting. I want to talk to people. So, uh, uh, and uh, sometimes we feel like, wait, we shouldn't be talking. We shouldn't be bothering the professor. No, bother me. I'm the one who is teaching the class. And so I want to make sure that you understand all of these things. So uh, uh, make sure that you are, uh, uh, you can go to the Campus Writing Center, but make sure that you're also talking to me. Um, and then I have down here the standard disability notification. So if there are any disability issues, if for some reason your disability does not allow you to access some of the things on Blackboard, please send me an email, let me know, and we can figure out what to do to make, um, make these things more accessible. Um, so if there's any kind of disability issues, uh, let me know. Uh, and you can also look at our uh, um, visit uh, student services for disabilities uh, um, as well. And then we've got the counseling center. So if you're having uh, uh, any kinds of uh, issues, still lingering issues from the pandemic or any other kinds uh, of issues, mental health issues, difficulties, uh, family difficulties, things like that, we've got a counseling center. And so, you know, you pay for that with your fees. And so make use of that uh, if you are having uh, any of those kinds of issues. So that's what we have on the uh, on the syllabus here um, on the actual uh, uh, that actual document. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is the schedule of assignments. And so here you can see what's actually going to be due. And so um, we have class doesn't you know, we don't have class for the you know third, fourth, and fifth. Um, some of you might be watching this on the fifth because I'm opening it up a little bit early. Um, but class officially begins on the sixth. What you need to do and what I do in each of these boxes exp is explain everything that you need to do. So for the first day, you need to uh, read the syllabus. So I put it in bold there that you need to read the syllabus. You need to watch the first day and syllabus videos. You're doing that right now. You need to submit the, sub submit the syllabus quiz by midnight. And so I tell you when those things are due. And then you need to watch the language and identity unit intro video, right? So those are all the things that you need to uh, actually complete. And if you go into Blackboard, there will be a place, uh, a folder, it says, to read, to watch, to complete. And so I say to complete and submit similar kinds of things. And you'll be able to find all this information in there. And I'll, in the next video, I'm going to 
to show you around Blackboard to show you how these two things work together. So those are those assignments. For July 7th, the assignments that are due, you need to watch the Writing Miss video, submit the three paragraph assignment by midnight, you need to watch the code switching videos, which and in the Blackboard folder, I've got a list of them. There are like three of them, I think, that you need to watch. And so watch all of them. And then you've got a Mother Tongue pre-reading video. Uh, Mother Tongue is an essay that you're going to read, they're going to be writing about. And I often do pre-reading videos where I take you through the first part of the uh uh, essay, the first part of the reading, and kind of explain some things to make sure that you understand what's going on there so that you're ready to do the rest of the reading. So those uh, videos become rather important because if you uh, watch those, you'll be able to go, oh, now I understand this reading better. If you don't watch them, you might start off the reading and get a little bit confused about a couple of things. So, um, oh, you know, over the years, I've under begun to understand what kinds of things have a tendency to make students confused. And I'll point out some things in there and say, here's what you want to pay attention to. Here's what you want to think about uh, uh, for that uh, 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 essay when you read it. So that's what we have for the pre-reading video. Um, for July 10th, you're supposed to read, actually read Mother Tongue. I don't know why I've got a uh, parentheses there. Um, uh, but for July 10th, you're supposed to actually read Mother Tongue. Uh, you can always get ahead, right? That's perfectly fine. So if you watch the pre-reading video, then uh, you can go ahead and read it right afterwards. But for uh, uh, the schedule says at least by the 10th you need to do that. And then I've got a uh, um, submit to the uh, Mother Tongue Code Switching Short Writing Assignment by midnight. And then I've got an intro to Project One video. So we're automatic by Monday, we're going to start working on our first um, writing project. And that intro to Project One video is where I'm going to uh, explain what that first writing project is. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll have that. Um, for the 11th, I've got a number of videos about the thesis, uh, paragraph, organization. This is where I'm actually going to teach you some things about writing. These things are really, really important, right? Uh, if I were in class, I'd be explaining some things about what is a thesis, um, what is a paragraph, how do we organize our essays, things like that, that you'll need to know before you go to write project number one. So you need to watch all of those, and then you've got an outline for project number one that's going to be due by midnight. Again, just that's the first step in project number one. Then uh, for the 12th, I'm, uh, you're supposed to review my co comments on your outlines. Again, remember that I said that we go through that process. So you submit the outlines, then you got to look at my comments, right? And then after you look at my comments, then you can begin, see how it says down here, you can begin uh, working on rough draft number one after you, re you reviewed my comments. Um, and then in the middle here, I have some uh, uh, MLA formatting works. So I'll explain what MLA formatting is. There's a video, there's a quiz that you go through to make sure that you understand what your MLA formatting is. I'll, if you don't, if you're like, what's MLA formatting? The video will explain that. Then um, you'll begin your rough draft on the 12th, work on the rough draft, and I've got a time just for us, to, for you to work on that and have conferences. If you have questions, what's going on with this project? Send me an email, we can set up a time to have a conference. Um, and then that rough draft needs to be due by 7 a.m. on the 14th. I told you things move quickly, right? Because we've only got five weeks to be able to do these three assignments. So it's got to be done by then. You're going to review my comments on your rough draft. Again, and then after you review them, then you can start working on final draft number one. I won't take you through all of these, but you can see that uh, final draft number one is due by 7 a.m. on the 19th. So you've got the outline due on the 11th the rough draft due on the 14th, and the final draft due on the 19th, right? Um, and realize that's kind of a long time because that's almost two weeks in a five-week course just to get through the first one so that the others come pretty quickly because, uh, again, to be able to go through that process, it's going to take some time. So that's just what this uh, uh, schedule of assignments looks like. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, see what that is. In the next video, I'm going to take on a quick tour of Blackboard and show you how this schedule of the schedule of assignments fits in with the way in which Blackboard is organized.